So welcome to uh, my presentation on from quality control to quality affordance. Uh, let me say some words about me. Uh, I'm Goran. I'm a software developer by trade from uh, 2003. I'm actually uh, a lawyer, but don't hold that against me because I never practiced law. Uh, I was a developer, a consultant, an architect, everything in between. Did a lot of uh, consulting projects for various companies. Uh, where I usually end up on projects that had some, let's say, difficulties that would need to be resolved, and they were usually like quality uh, assurance oriented. So that's how I got into quality assurance. Uh, I've, I've been uh, working with Adacta since 2012, and I've been employed since 2019. Um, I'm a proponent of test driven development and sustainable development, but that's another topic. Um, so, a little bit, a bit about AdInsure, which is the Adactor's product. Uh, it's an insurance platform, let's say. It's very customizable, it's very modular, it's very scalable. Uh, on the micro level, it's uh, using layered architecture. On, on macro level, it's basically event-driven. So, it's quite complex to, to describe the system. This is uh, one of the graphs from our architects and how things are put together. So, but basically what uh, we need for this talk is maybe understand this thing. So Alishore is a platform. Uh, on top of this platform, uh, various other companies, insurance companies, write their own configuration of this platform. So they write their own insurance project products. Uh, if you know anything about insurance, you know that every insurance company has some different idea of what they want to sell you. Uh, and on top of that, we also have plugins. So in configuration, you define what your insurance product is, the UI schema, how it looks like. There are some transitions, how this document progresses when you, I don't know, uh, say you want to report some claim and how this gets handled and who has to authorize stuff. So this whole, whole workflow is configured. And plugins are more related to like, uh, I don't know, uh, sinks and providers. So Things are places where data goes to be stored or transferred somewhere else, and providers are where data comes from. So these are points of integrations with other systems. Um, so Adacta started as a startup with like four people. They developed a very successful pro product, and uh, the version two was basically, hey, let's do it a bit better, and it sold better. Uh, they expanded to like 50 people, that's where when Around this time, I, I came on board. And uh, when they started selling to larger corporations, bigger insurance companies, they started to ran, run into a problem with this approach of make sure the software works. So they did Agile, they worked in sprints, they established some definition of done, stuff like that. Uh, but basically, we ran into problems when the system was deployed, when the system was being used. So the managerial solution to this problem was uh, how to make sure it has no bugs, create a QA team and have them deal with it. So we don't care. Um, so this was the first, let's say, uh, motto of the QA section of the company, uh, which wasn't really a section, it was just an idea. So software quality comes from quality control. Uh, that's the easiest way to deal with it. So basically, we established that developers need to do unit testing more. Uh, we did manual end-to-end -end testing. We had a whole team of people who were doing manual testing. Uh, there were some integration test automation where we called the APIs and this was automated and this was run in, in, in continuous integration servers. And we also did cold coverage, which was a big deal. Hey, let's have cold coverage because that means that the, the software is being tested, which caused a lot of problems because, of course, if anyone ever done, did this, you will know that developers will cover the code that's easier to test. So you'll have lots of tests of code that's not complicated and almost no test for <laughs> complex code. Uh, so this percentage of code covered will not tell you anything. Um, what, what kind of bugs we had? Uh, basically, we figured out that uh, when users use this application, like they were like really users that used this application for a long time, and they, they followed the happy paths, everything was perfect, uh, because these happy paths were being tested as well. 
Uh, any, any deviation from the script would run into issues. Um, there were a lot of unit testing anti-patterns, like tests that actually didn't test anything, tests that were uh, basically just uh, returning true all the time, stuff like that. Uh, and also two things that were never part of our testing, basically performance issues and integration issues, uh, so integration with other systems, because we never deal with them in, in, in development. Uh, we had no integration tests. So this is QA, how, how it looked like for us. Uh, on one side you had development, so R&D, and on the, side, the other side is QA, and we are guarding production from the, the little ball. So any, any new feature that comes, we just bounce it back. Uh, so what the problem was basically is uh, there's very, very few people that are QA people in Adacta, and there's a lot of developers. So this company grew to a size of about 300, and the QA stayed uh, up around 10, let's say, uh, with testers maybe 20. And uh, we couldn't handle this. There are just too many balls in the air. So uh, we changed our model to this. So uh, software quality comes from quality development. So if we can't really just control stuff, if control is, is a problem because it comes very late in development, it's very costly, maybe we need to rethink things. Uh, so why does this matter? If you only look at the software quality as, as a measure of control, you will detect your bugs very late in development, where features are complete, where documentation is already being written, when everything is, the DOI has been tweaked by user experience guys, and then you say, this doesn't work, we need to change stuff. This is very late, and it's very costly. We had stabilization periods that lasted for a month. So everything was done, but, but there were bugs, and there were fixes, and this took a lot of time. So this represents a change in, in culture, basically. Uh, from research and development is, is our enemy to research and development is our client. So they're no longer people who we just say, okay, those are the, the guys that write all the bugs, to those are the guys that, that need our help to create better code, to write code that has no bugs. Uh, from the manager's standpoint, we change this from QA is responsible for the quality to QA is responsible for making sure that developers have everything they need to do development better. So R&D no longer delivers code to us, R&D delivers features that are complete. Uh, so QA doesn't really find bugs, QA is there to provide us with tools and frameworks and everything to help us find bugs while we're developing. This of course needs, we need to shift the knowledge from QA to, to those teams. So coding standards and test framework usage is very important and this testing mindset on how QA approaches uh, new features instead of how developer does. Developers basically says, okay, my product owner defined some workflow of how things should work. I just procedurally code this to do the exactly same thing. And tester approach is different. The tester approach is from user perspective and they approach this as, hey, what if I type in 12 here? It says name, but what if I, I paste an image in this box? Uh, and of course, uh, this is very modern to say, uh, shift left, so shifting the testing further, further into development time. So much more emphasis on, on unit testing. QA changed from team that basically tested the product to QA is a team that basically uh, creates testing frameworks and uh, cold coverage tools. And we basically ask our customers, hey, which is the part of the application that's difficult to test? And they say, okay, uh, configurations are a problem. So uh, we have unit tests for C Sharp for our platform, but configurations are written in some JSON files and we don't know how to deal with that. So we develop validation frameworks and stuff like that. We integrated this into our IDEs. So when you write configuration, you can already check if this configuration is correctly written, if it's structured correctly and stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> linting is, a, uh, let's say, a very, very big success because this is some kind of rules of coding that you can basically also integrate into IDA and you can 
specify rules and, and quality gateways so, so developers, when they're writing code, they're already reminded, hey, this is not a pattern you should use, this is a problem, maybe change this. Um, and also parallel manual testing. So it's, it's nice that Maya had this talk. <laughs> uh, before, we had a group of testers, let's say around 12, uh, which were basically testing the new feature. So they got, uh, let's say, a test case of some kind from product owners which said that you should be able to, I don't know, create a claim and this should be handled by the backend and, and you, get, you get paid because you had something in short that's, that broke. Um, what they were doing, they were basically uh, clicking through the applications, they would uh, try to figure out how to do this, and they would write very detailed test cases, uh, and they would write a lot of them. Uh, and these test cases would then be used as a tool for regression testing in the next release cycle, which meant that this kind of grew. Uh, I think the last number was 500. And <laughs> nobody wanted to do this, nobody wanted to click through to do those. Uh, there was a lot of change in, in people who were working in this uh, team. So they keep changing and new people who came didn't know what they were testing, so it, it was a lot of pain. So uh, uh, when QA team uh, was, was basically promoted to department, um, and when I took over, we basically removed all manual testers from, from QA team. QA team no longer have, has any manual tester. We didn't fire them, don't worry. Uh, those testers basically moved to the research and department teams. So they are now part of the development. They're no longer QA. They're working with developers when the, the feature is being developed. While the feature is being developed, it's already be, be, being used by the tester. They can explore things, they can break things, they can do exploratory testing in full because Nothing is being automated, feature is still not done. Uh, by the release time, however, they should have uh, written detailed uh, test case of how this feature is being used. And this is something that QA then takes. We don't need to know anything about the product or, or this module, and we automate this. So our team has test automation, engineers that know how to take these test cases and automate them. That's our job. So. We kind of think that we maybe have the best of both worlds now. Um, okay, shift in the future. There's a lot of things that's left. So performance testing is a very big pain point because <coughs> developers usually do not have uh, access to environments of this scale or, or data of this scale that's, that's uh, required to do actual performance testing. Um, so. Like I said before, we dealt with companies from Slovenia, which is, has a population of 2 million people, so you have like 2 million records in your database. But when you're dealing with, I don't know, Russia, and you have insurance companies that insure the, the Red Army, now you have billions of records. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no longer feasible for a developer to have this accessible on his machine and test it. End-to-end uh, -end UI testing is something that we uh, recently starting doing because we know all of the problems that the colleague mentioned before about UI testing and we didn't want to touch that before we had uh, other things settled. Um, and security testing. This is like something that nobody really considers until we have a problem and this is a completely new area for us to explore. So we already did some of that. My colleague sitting here is more or less responsible for this. So we employ a lot of uh, static analysis security testing tools, uh, investigating some dynamic analysis security testing frameworks, and uh, hopefully we'll deal with, deal with this. Um, shift right. So the, uh, this is the other part of the equation. So uh, this application, now 3.0, was de 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 developed with the idea that Logging is important because we used to have problems with figuring out what went wrong. Uh, also monitoring, uh, which is a new thing for, for us. So this application has a lot of metrics that are being uh, uh, ex exported when the application is running. It's heavily used in performance testing because this is the way we figure out where the bottlenecks are. 
So the application reports to you how many, I don't know, what's the CPU usage, what's the memory usage. It reports to you, I don't know, how many documents were created, how many calls to the database were done, how long did they take. You get histograms of, of calls, so you can figure out that, okay, mostly the system is working well, but there are some points, some queries which take very long. Uh, so in the future, we, we'd like to, uh, to basically change this logging to tracing. Logging just gives you a lot of information which is difficult to parse. In tracing, you basically get the logs of specific requests to the system. So you get to trace this, uh, I don't know, somebody called an API, what happened? In our system, this would usually mean that some business logic was called, something was stored somewhere, the, an, an event was posted to a message broker, this was taken by some microservice, some consumer, which all called something else. So it's very important to basically trace this information, uh, where it's going and what's it doing. Uh, also, uh, uh, we recently started uh, basically giving our customers the option to uh, use the same monitoring tools in, in production. So they can set up the, the same things we even provide them with, with uh, I don't know, same, uh, how should I put this, same tools and, and, and same graphs and everything we have in performance testing and they can schedule alerts and stuff like that. So when they see that something is, is growing out of, out of bounds, a proper team is alerted and they can start dealing with it. And lastly, feature flags, which is uh, basically an option to have some new feature enabled or disabled in production uh, on the fly. So you can basically deploy something uh, and if it turns out that there's a problem, you can turn it off. Uh, or even better, you can turn it on for certain types of users or certain population of users. So you can slowly, let's say, uh, deliver some product into production. Uh, this is some, uh, let's say, a typical, typical case of software development lifecycle, how it looks like. So we have different phases, but these phases have a lot of things attached to them. Uh, so in requirements gathering, uh, we, we get our product owners to give us uh, requested features and business value of those. Uh, the thing that's missing, it's usually like painted white in my presentation, is security and performance requirements. This is something that we need to implement. So QA starts working in this development life cycles in the requirements phase, not in the <laughs> release phase, phase as it usually was. Um, when development starts, you have design and architecture section where we have estimated resources, risk and stuff. We also uh, are trying to import uh, software composition analysis where we basically look at the components that are being used by the system and estimate the same things and also look at how uh, what risk this brings. For instance, uh, the component we are advising our customers to use is uh, an SQL database and an Oracle database. And what, what risk and benefits does, does those bring? Uh, for message broker, we're using ActiveMQ. So this is something that maybe our customer need to, to decide and need to learn about what are the, I don't know, advantages of going to. Artemis instead of staying with the old uh, ActiveMQ. Uh, coding itself, uh, so linting and the SAS uh, tools are very, very useful. Uh, this basically gives uh, us the option to turn some rule on. Uh, for instance, we had a problem with production with uh, things breaking down when uh, async operations were being blocked. Uh, this is something that's really easy to, to turn on in, in your linting rules or SAS tools to let, just say, okay, this is, this is a, no longer a warning, this is a breaking thing. So the application will no longer compile if the, if the developer does this uh, and it will surely never go to, to, through the merge request because it will fail on the integration phase. Uh, also, uh, software composition analysis on packages. Uh, because this software uses a lot of third-party tools, a lot of third-party frameworks, a lot of third-party packages. And as we know recently, there was a problem with a package from some guy who uh, 
programmed it that uh, it would delete files if the computer was Russian. <laughs> and we did have Russian clients, so it impacted us. So uh, this is important. And of course, the whole shift to the uh, left thing, so unit testing in development phase. Uh, manual testing is now part of the team that develops things, and also integration testing. So we call it API testing. We wrote a framework for them, so it's easier to the, for them to, to create API tests that are very similar to what the product owner would write. Uh, on integration, so whenever developers do something, uh, it creates a merge request. Uh, this goes to code review. Uh, we perform static analysis on it. We do unit testing on it. Uh, we run unit tests on it. We run integration tests on it. So this is done all automatically. Nobody needs to click anything. It's on CI. Uh, the test results are created and, and reported. Uh, the static analysis results are all, all, also reported and will prevent you from committing this code if, if some rule, important rule has been broken. Um, the test coverage is, uh, let's say, work in progress, because the last time we implemented test coverage, it resulted in very bad tests. So we're not sure if we're going to do this again. Uh, in the release phase, unfortunately, this is the part where we do performance testing, uh, and also penetration testing and security testing, which is a bit late, but we haven't found a way to go around this. Uh, and also, this will be the place where end-to-end -end tests will be run because they are very, very expensive and long-running, and there's no way we can do this, let's say, on every commit. And in the release, you have all sorts of other things. So not only would do we release some packages, new packages for the, for the system, we also have some auxiliary things like dashboards for Grafana, for monitoring, like... Uh, uh, test fragments for JMeter for perfor uh, performance testing and stuff like that. And documentation, let's say. <coughs> so in product testing phase, uh, we work on uh, product monitoring. So we have this dashboard that can be deployed on production and on our uh, testing environment. Compatibility testing, which is very important because the system is a platform. Uh, so every time we deploy a new platform or have available new platform, this means that we need to test it against various conf configurations from various teams that are working for different insurance companies. So how does our, let's say, new version of platform break things for them? Um, some of these things are, well, let's say, spotted and documented by developers, but we still need to actually deploy these things to figure out what we broke. Um, and in the post-release activities, we have test automation of manual tests. So those exploratory tests eventually turn into the test cases that are following procedure, and we automate those. Uh, also try to get lessons learned from the developers and gather requirements from the development team to, to tell us basically what, what was the, the pain point in development of this release. So this is our new motto, so to quality from quality, it comes from quality developers. So it's our job to make the developers better, let's say. So that would be, in short, what we do. <laughs> Any questions? Does that mean that they like research and develop, or what, what is meant by that? Yeah, we basically afford developers to write better code. We do everything the developers want us to do. They're our customers. So if they say, uh, we need some new f framework to, to do JavaScript testing, then we go out and research and find the best framework for them and try to use it and, and basically transfer them that knowledge to the team. So yeah. How does the QA get the this knowledge if the research? Uh, we employ people who are <laughs> very skilled at, at finding things out. So it's we are basically research and development department, but we have a specific uh, client. It's not, our client is not the insurance companies. Our client is developers in Adapt. So 
it's the same thing if developers get asked, you need to program something that does something for an insurance company, he needs to figure things out. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dan from Excel. How do yeah. you ensure uh, component usage? You said that it falls under your jurisdiction. So which components are uh -huh. in the source code? So it's not really <laughs> under our jurisdictions. We do need to uh, research the components that we uh, tell clients to use, that we, let's say, In the coding yeah. part you had also, isn't it? Aha, the, uh -huh, the packages. Yeah. Um, for the packages, this is run automatically by, by tools. So for NPM packages, you have one tools. For, for NuGet packages, for C-sharp, there, there are others, which basically check if there are some new vulnerabilities and stuff like that, and if we need to update stuff. So, but uh, do you ensure that there are no new packages? or? Uh, yeah, for some parts of the system. So for platform, uh, it's actually the architects that uh, need to OK a use of new package. So uh, they have a code committee. Yeah. Uh, yes. Which packages are okay to include? Yes. For configuration for for npm, it's it's more more free for all. <laughs> but yeah. But uh, so uh, another question here is: uh, so you ensure the version then? Yeah. Cache? Yeah. Yeah. We we have specific versions. So it's, like you said, that if somebody injects, uh, then the yeah. Whenever. Then you, uh, so, I mean, those tools run anyway. So if the new version would come, it would it would basically detect this and, and it would freak out on the CI that we have uh, some vulnerability issue. It's usually because somebody didn't upgrade it. Uh, <laughs> usually, yeah. That's usually the problem. Uh, but um, the thing that that's missing, for instance, is uh, uh, licensing uh, uh, requirements check. So those NPM packages, which, which should like grow, grow into thousands and thousands, they all have various licenses attached to them. And we use them, and some of them we probably shouldn't use. So that's another so, step. Uh, just to yeah. you have a list uh, which is automatically checked. Yeah, it's, it's in, yeah. in NPM you have this log file, what's it called, yeah. yeah. So. Uh -huh. We do not use NPM, but yeah. So yeah. More diverse, yeah. But similar problems. Packages are an issue, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what other tools do you use? So, Python? Ah, uh, languages. Uh, languages, C Sharp is the platform. Uh, SQL is for database access. Uh, JavaScript is, um, configurations are mostly run, uh, written in JavaScript. Uh, okay. Configurations are basically, let's say, some specific, domain-specific language, because they are really written for insurance companies. So you deal with terms and, and things that are really insurance-specific. But there are parts of the, like, uh, of, of configurations like uh, global rules or specific rules that, that are activated whenever you change a document or you need to evaluate the document. This is JavaScript. Uh, also, UI actions are in JavaScript, stuff like that. So. Basically, those three, I would say. Uh, our data analytics team is using Python, I think. But they're very separate from the rest of us because they're very geeky and mathematical and nobody knows what they do. So Thanks. your uh, product is uh, SaaS? What? Software as a service? Uh, <clears throat> our product can be uh, deployed on the cloud on-prem. On uh, the SaaS part is being developed, but it's it's quite difficult because uh, insurance companies, especially with the new legislation in in the European Union, they're treated a bit differently. So you need to 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 have some special security clearances to actually host this data in 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 other sections or, or in other countries and stuff like that. So it's, it's a bit difficult, and also we need to really learn about what. Uh, so, like the SLAs mean and, and I don't know, high availability, what it means to, to customers that have so many users and, and that work practically 24-7. So it, it, we are, let's say, starting to get into the SAS uh -huh. part. Uh, how far have we come uh, in uh, automatic UI testing? Uh, well, currently we d we use Cypress. We have a, a guy in Belgrade who is uh, like an expert in in this uh, field, and he basically is developing 
Um, at the start of, of, the, of the, the whole project, uh, the product owners who are really like guys who are really knowledgeable in insurance wrote some, some let's say, specific test cases which we call alpha tests, which go through normal operations which every insurance will probably have, every insurance company will probably have. And these tests are, are basically now, let's say we're starting to automate them. And they're very simple, like create, create, a, create a, I don't know, insurance person, uh, create uh, an insurance for it, uh, I don't know, uh, create an, an event that uh, he files a claim for and stuff like that. So very, very early, we're basically in, in let's say, uh, proof of concept phase. So we want to automate this in, in QA to see how it works. Uh, how long those tests take, how brittle they are, and uh, can we make this framework so useful that development teams can take over and automate it? Because if this becomes our job, then it's impossible because we have to do UI tests for teams from all over the Europe, and there's like ten of us, so it's not gonna it's not gonna scale. So it's basically proof of concept right now. <laughs>